Hello and welcome to day 15 of 100 Days of Tonalism. I'm your resident painter, M. Francis McCarthy, and the study that I uh, did today is of a painting by George Ness called An Autumn Afternoon. Um, as I stated previously, there's going to be over, I believe it's 33 Innesses um, that were painted in this uh, series, and the reason for that is because He's my favorite painter, and uh, I really uh, one of the points of doing this series was to to learn more about um, his approach to painting and uh, to refine my abilities as a painter, especially as a tonalist painter. And George Ness is really the preeminent tonalist painter. There's a lot of other people that are great. Um, I'd say my second favorite tonalist would be. Francis Murphy, sorry, uh, but uh, and you know someone like uh, uh, Charles Warren Eaton is certainly way up there, but nobody's quite the equal of an S. Um, I'm going to talk today about uh, some of the one of the principles of uh, he was quite a thinker and he had a lot of opinions about how to put together a picture. Um, this is an article, uh, a chapter from the book called George Ness and the Science of Landscape by Rachel Ziedi Dilu. Pretty interesting book. Um, this is about painting unity. Um, in the fifth discourse of his optics, published in 1637, Rene Descartes undertook to explain how it was that objects we look at in print very perfect images upon the backs of our eyes. Uh, he first compared this process to the operation of a cam camera obscura. Light enters a chamber, the eye, through the single hole, the pupil, passes through a lens and casts an image on the cloth stretched at the back of the chamber, the retina. This card then invited his reader to recreate, recreate this process for himself by constructing a similar model or apparatus. We're not going to read all that, but we are going to talk about uh, and this, uh, he wrote, and I quote, cut a hole in a piece of paper, say two by three inches, then measure diagonally across from corner to corner, the distance being three and a half inches. Multiply this by three and the result is ten and a half inches. Now hold the paper ten and a half inches away from the eye, and whatever can be seen through this opening can be grasped in one vision. Hold it close to the eye and it will be necessary to shift the eye to see all that is contained within the opening. This is great. And this is a principle that I myself really try and practice. Uh, and that, to me it's one of the, the lesser known aspects of tonalism, which is uh, this avoidance of big broad vistas that need to be scanned the same way that we scan nature uh, to create a picture. but. Uh, Basically, what he's talking about here is a principle of a whole scene contained in one view, one grasp, um, with no scanning. The reason for avoiding scanning in a painting is because um, scanning creates a, a different juxtaposition in the viewer's eye and mind than a single image that just goes right in. And uh, a single image that goes right in is going to be more relaxing. It's going to be more poetic. It's going to be a contained statement of nature much more so than, than having to scan, oh there's a tree here, there's a river there, etc. Um, this is like definitely one of the hallmarks of the Hudson River School which would do these giant panoramic paintings of these huge vistas and you know over in one corner you'd have a a little group of people uh, with a campfire and uh, on the way on the other side of the painting there'd be a, a carriage drawn by some horses and a road and in the distance is uh, some mountains and behind the mountains is a glorious glowing luminescent sunset and there's uh, not taken away from these paintings by the way they are amazing if you ever get a chance to go to a museum in a uh, big city or if you happen to be on the east coast a little city um, I definitely recommend checking out the work of the Luminous and the Hudson River School. It's pretty awesome. However, um, tonalism was in many ways an innovation, or at least a focused way of making a poetic statement. 
um, a more emotional statement, a more intimate statement. And, and that's, uh, like I said uh, earlier, um, is the main proponent of this. And he was very serious about the science of this, um, even if this particular approach to science wouldn't really hold up as science to anyone else. He approached it that way. Um, anyway, I uh, hope you're reading the blog as well as listening to these videos. Uh, um, you can uh, definitely get to the blog through my website, which is landscapepainter.co.nz. Um, you'll also see some of my own work there. And uh, I thank you for listening to day 15 and watching the video. And uh, stay out of trouble, and we'll see you again for day 16. Take care.